Welcome to the Divinely Driven Results Show. My name is Zee Lee Smith, Christian business strategist, and we get to empower Christian women entrepreneurs just like you to really reach their sales goals and other goals that God has put on their heart by partnering with God, empowering your mindset, and utilizing biblical business strategy. Now, I want to ask you, when it comes to your business, are you just feeling like you don't have time to find connections on your super busy schedule? Or maybe you're discouraged with the results that you're receiving in your business and possibly even your personal life, or maybe you've actually questioned God's plan and timing for your success. I know I have, and I know that most Christian women entrepreneurs have, and that's okay. We're going to learn how to move past three challenges that women face in business. And guys, I have such an incredible guest on here today. She is just a heart of gold. I've been on her show and it was super amazing and fun. Um, and Julie Kensler is the expert on hope following the hard things we face. Oh, I just I get chills even just reading that. She is a best-selling author, international broadcaster, and podcaster. Julie is passionate about equipping people to move from struggles to hope in any season of life we are walking in. So Julie, thank you so much for being here today. Yes, I am so excited to be on your show. Absolutely. Now, uh, before we get into your spiritual thought, because I know you want to share something with us here today, tell us a little bit more about hope and why that's so important for you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, it, it just all goes back to a really tragic situation in my family, losing my dear sister, Tammy, to a drunk driver oh. and uh, worked through a lot of grief recovery. This was about nine and a half years ago. And uh, just new hope came to me and it was just a beautiful experience and something I just can't contain inside of me. And I have to share it with all people in all walks of life. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. We can definitely dive into that a little bit more, but um, you wanted to share something with us here today. What has God put on your heart? Oh, yes. I have a, a prayer actually from my book, uh, Hope Follows. <laughs> And I was just kind of looking through here for some ideas to share. And I just, I love this because it kind of wraps up all three of the challenges we're going to be talking about into just, let's just give it to God and surrender. And here's the prayer. Lord, will you free us from the need for answers? Help us to surrender. Jesus, you are the good shepherd. In your name alone, do I find everything. We find everything we need in all that we long for. You hold the keys of life and the purpose of your heart prevails. Creator of all, you have it all figured out. Jesus, forgive us for trying to take on what only you can handle. Be our focus because you are our answer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, that is so beautiful. And we have to check out more of her book. It's Hope Follows, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you guys got just a taste of what's in that amazing book. So go check it out. I'm sure you're on Amazon. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you can go to my website, hopefollows.com. It'll take you to links, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever. Awesome. Beautiful. Thanks so much for starting us off with that beautiful prayer. So sure. tell me a little bit more about these three challenges that you feel inspired to speak on here today. Oh, okay. Well, we have finding connection in a busy schedule. Do you want me to go through each one? Yeah, let's just take one at a time here. Okay, yeah, first one, let's go person. through finding connection in a busy schedule. And for me, the, for, I feel like it's all about being intentional. And I have a motto, a life motto that is carpe omnia, which means seize it all. It's not just seize the day, seize the moment, but it's seize everything. And when we are feeling disconnected with people and are we're busy working and and we feel that longing for the connection, I feel like just seize it, find something to seize, be intentional, um, dare to try new activities. When after losing my sister Tammy, one of the things I did that I had I had gone on mission trips before, but this was very different. So I went with my older son and his high school group to the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And it was a huge stretch you out of your comfort zone. And I would never have been so blessed from that trip and been a blessing had I not seized that opportunity and had that carpe omnia, like, I'm just going to do it. I just need to be intentional. 
And so that's what we need to do in our business and work professional and personal lives is making that decision to find the connection, whether it's church group friends, it's um, even your friends, uh, if you have younger children, ladies out there on the sports teams, ask a mom to go get coffee or bring a coffee and hang out and chat while you're at the game or the practice. And uh, just neighborhood. I was even thinking, I uh, got some good input and feedback from people that I uh, know on Facebook and they gave me great ideas, but neighborhood gatherings. Whenever we see a sign that our neighborhood is having a get together, why not just show up, right? Yeah, I love that. And especially because, you know, I, I, I am very much an introvert. I have been my entire life and I was just terrified of talking to people for a really long time. And so it, I really had to push myself out of my comfort zone to start talking to people. But it hit me one day that God can't use hermits. <laughs> right. And so if we are not talking to people on a regular basis, then we're not sharing the gospel that God has given us and the message that he's asking us to share. And we're not being able to grow our businesses because I don't care if you sell dog biscuits, you're still in business with humans and with people. So make time and seize though those opportunities to connect with other people. I love that. Just, it doesn't have to look a certain way, right? It's not like you have to go to a networking event, go to a neighborhood barbecue and just see where the conversation goes, right? And, and I feel like um, many people use their phones. We use our phones for calendars and scheduling things. And some people use a planner, a paper planner, a wall calendar, whatever it is, schedule it in. Who haven't you seen and talked to in a long time that you've been longing to have connection with? Mm -hmm. Just pick up the phone and text or call and make it happen. Yeah. And, and those are little promptings from the spirit, right? Like Heavenly Father knows that that person probably needs us right now, or needs whatever word you're about to tell them, even just someone to check in and say like, Hey, how have you been doing? That makes a huge difference in my life. So why not? Exactly. At least. And I was just thinking the same thing. They're probably thinking I'm missing some, I want to be connected. I'm feeling lonely. And it just takes one person to make that, that first effort. Yes, absolutely. And I always teach about following the spirit's first voice, right? You, you hear that first voice and that's the Holy Spirit. And then the second voice comes in and says, yeah, but you don't have time to do that. Or they're going to think you're a weirdo for contacting them after like 16 years, <laughs> right? But always listen to that first voice and let go of that second one because you know it's the adversary. So find that connection uh, and, and seize the opportunities to make that. I love that. Oh, beautiful. Well, well, good. What about our second challenge that women in business face? Yes. Well, we get discouraged with the results of our business and our personal life, the goals that we set. And it's so easy to get discouraged if things are just not working out. And for me, I, I like to think about summertime. And it's the season when we have flowers, are, they're in full bloom. It's just beautiful. They're perfect. I mean, I was just in Oregon. And the flowers are just breathtaking there. The trees, everything is just beautiful. Well, it's not always like that because they have their rain, they have their snow, they have their cold time. But I, I also think about how carefree summer is and how, uh, think back to all of those watching, listening to this episode, think back of your summer times. And when you had some really carefree moments, for me, I think about when I would ride my bicycle with friends to our community pool and I would, we would camp out in our backyard. Those are very, um, they give me that free feeling. And, and I think, okay, well, I had to pause and reflect on that. So why don't I pause and reflect on when God has been there for me, when he's encouraged me in those moments where I have felt stuck. When you feel stuck, pause, reflect on the areas that where you have come from, reflect on what the purpose God has for you in this moment, in this work, this career, this business, 
You are there for a reason, a purpose, a plan. And is there something new that maybe you're missing because you're so discouraged and you just pause and reflect and think, okay, let me reestablish, refocus on my goals. Let me just revisit those and see what changes can I be making? Um, I know people have shared with me other areas they, uh, how they work through that discouragement is um, just talking to some friends who can en encourage you, being honest, whether it's your business, work, personal life, whatever it is, but sometimes we just need to be transparent and realize that that friend may, or coworker or business partner may have been through something similar. And I love how God, I don't like the challenges we have to go through, but I love what God does through it because it's through those challenges that we can be such a blessing and encouragement to others. And that's what we're looking for. If we're discouraged, at least the opposite is encouraged. So who can we encourage? Who can we be around that will encourage us? Affirmation, speaking. Yes, I believe that I am called for this. This is my purpose. And I might be stuck, but I am going to stay encouraged in Jesus' name. Prayer. I mean, prayer is our one, a two way communication with God because He hears us. And then we just sit and we wait for Him to give us that peace, that calm to help us continue on through that moment of discouragement. Beautiful. I love the passion that you speak with too, because you can tell that the, this comes from experience, that you had those discouraging moments and you've turned to your heavenly father and he's been able to help you. And, and the scripture that came up in my mind is just seek and ye shall find, right? As we seek our heavenly father, we will find him. We will see his hand in our lives previously and in our businesses and even presently as well. So I want you guys in the comments who are watching and listening to this, put in the comments, what do you do when you get discouraged with your results, especially in business? Because it is not always what we think it's going to be. In fact, my hubby always laughs and he says, if you want to uh, make God laugh, tell him your plans for the future. <laughs> and uh, as, as Julie knows, I can attest to that and a fertility uh, story that we have of waiting 14 years for our miracle baby. But it's the same thing with business too, is that, you know, we may look around at all of the people who are having great success or so it seems. And it's like, how come I don't have that? right? When we start comparing ourselves to other people, that's a lot of times where that discouragement comes from. But the encouragement that you're talking about is turning to God and turning to other people and being an encouragement to them. I think that's so brilliant. Um, can I ask, where did this, this technique come from for you? Do you have a story to go along with that? Oh, you mean to, from being discouraged to mm -hmm. encouraging others? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, being a mom of four kids, there are so many moments where you have just poured everything into it and you will be faced with discouragement. You will be faced with disappointment. And the only thing you can do, you can stay stuck or you can just look ahead. And so one of my sons who was a little on the more difficult side, he, uh, he was just middle school years were really rough into high school. And so we met, he and I met with one of his teachers and she said, wisest words ever, he's in the tunnel. He's in the tunnel and that's where he's at right now. He can't, he doesn't know, realize what he's doing. It's all about him, but he will get to the end of the tunnel. And he did. He's an amazing young man. He's in his mid 20s, successful, very kind to me now and respectful and fun. But wow, just that one statement gave me some hope. In fact, our family even gave a, we even made up a song about being in the tunnel. <laughs> and we tried to make it lighthearted. And so I, I know when you're down in the dumps and you're just feeling so discouraged, somebody is going to say something to you that will stick. And so I apply that to so much that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and God is holding the light there, but he's also holding you through the darkness. 
Mm -hmm. And I bet that she probably went through the tunnel as well. Otherwise, she would not have known that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that's one of the most beautiful things that God does for us is that he answers our prayers through other human beings. And it goes back to your connection, finding connection in that busy schedule. Sometimes it's just living our lives and looking for those, those little promptings from the spirit that somebody else has, has been prompted to give us too. So, oh. Love this. Okay, so you know we're out of that discouragement, but maybe we're questioning God's plan and timing for our success. Talk to us a little bit more about that one. Right. And it really goes hand in hand because you're so discouraged. And then you start questioning, okay, is this the right business? Is this the right career? What is happening? Why am I uh, not feeling like I'm at peace with this? I'm I'm just questioning everything. And for me, I recall. Um, once again, I continue to go back to when I lost my sister and I learned so many life lessons that brought me hope and renewed joy uh, that I, I look at my should haves and could haves. And I think, wow, I should have visited her the summer before she died. Mm -hmm. I planned it, but I didn't. I could have called her maybe the morning of and distracted her. There's all these things that will drive us crazy, ladies. And we can just stay there and, and question what God's plan is. Well, you shouldn't have done this, God, and why didn't you do this? But I actually challenge you to stay there for just a moment because we need to be intentional. So just for a moment, face that negative thought. Face that questioning of God, what's happening, but then don't stay stuck there. Allow the emotions to come through because that's God's way of letting us kind of uh, release all that stress. Um, but then make the moment, take that step forward and pivot. So turn in a different direction and think of some positive, rewarding uh, really absolutely like I won the lottery moment in your career, your business, and really dwell on that. What were the emotions you felt, uh, things you saw, what were you wearing? And do you, whatever you can remember, the place you were at, uh, the location, and remember and sit on that. And then reminding God, okay, God, I know you have me here. This is, this is where I'm at and I'm questioning it, but I'm also going to reflect on where you have brought me and remember those times when I doubted and I wanted to write a book for 20 years and it, this wasn't the kind of book I wanted to write <laughs> that would give people hope and encouragement that I learned after losing my sister, but it's what God put on my heart. And I doubted it and I questioned it, but I went forward trusting him. And I feel like that's what we need to do at times. We just have to trust him in the process. Again, praying, reading God's word. There's so many ways that we can um, really settle into, okay, yes, God, I questioned it, but now I'm, I'm back on track. I'm back on the tracks here. Um, leaning not into our own understanding. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I love this. My sons, my two sons go to a church called 29, 11. Uh, <laughs> I, I love this version. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says it right there, ladies. If you're questioning it, just read some scripture. Pray and talk to some people who can um, help realign you. It, we never thought it would be easy starting a business or uh, your career, whatever it is, but just knowing that I had this before and I made it and I'm here and I'm gonna make it again. 
Mm, oh, so powerful because when we bring God into it, it just takes us to a whole nother level, right? We've seen so many people who try to find success without God. And, you know, if that's the path that they want to be on, then that's fine. But for those women who feel like they should partner with God and that have a testimony of God, why wouldn't you take your heart to him when you're in those discouraging moments or when you're questioning him? And the thing that I love that you said the most is that you give yourself a moment to question God. You let yourself process those emotions. You don't just say like, oh, I'm a terrible person for even questioning God. Let's just move on and forget it ever happened. No, we've got to express those feelings. And maybe it's black journaling, right? Writing out those thoughts and then burning them or, you know, tearing them up or whatever it might be. Or maybe it's talking to someone about how you're feeling or whatever that is, journaling or, you know, getting that out, screaming a pillow, who knows, right? Get it out, sister. And then you can move on to what I feel like you were talking about was gratitude. Gratitude for those times that God was there for you and that you were able to have hope and that you were able to accomplish things that maybe you hadn't thought of. So I think gratitude and, you know, allowing yourself to feel that emotion and then stepping into gratitude and, and leaning into God, man, how could we not overcome anything that is thrown at us, right? Philippians 4.13 is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that only happens if we lean unto him and get out of the questioning of God, because we already know he has our best interest at heart, like you talked about with Jeremiah's scripture. So, ah, Beautiful. This has been amazing. So I want to ask you, what is one last thought that God is asking you to share right now, Julie? Something that was resonating with me is uh, if God has opened a door for you, I just keep thinking this and you are where you are and there's no, no closed door at all, then you have to realize that's where you are and you continue going forward however you need to, getting a life coach, Getting, if you need to see a, a counselor because you know there's just some other things going on and you can't do it yourself, don't go it alone. That's the biggest thing is don't ever try to do anything alone. We've got God and he has given us so many resources and so many people in our lives that they're, our te- they're on our team. So we just need to handcraft our own team. Oh, beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. So we talked about how uh, Julie has written an incredible book. So go check it out. Hope Follows on Amazon. And then you also said hopefollows.com. Is that on my website? Yes. You can see all kinds of blogs on there and I have a show as well, as you mentioned, and uh, there's something to encourage anyone and everyone. Beautiful. So when you're having a rough time, make sure you go seek Julie (laughs) because she can give you that hope. That is one of the beautiful things that have come out of her, her difficult time. And I'm so, I I love how you put it as well as like, we don't like going through the challenges and the trials, but I'm so glad that you went through that so that you have created this book and you can give people hope when they don't feel like there is hope. So that's just such a tender mercy of the Lord that you have taken that on. Um, So anywhere else, that people can find you or anything else that you'd like to say before we end here today? Sure. You can find me on Facebook, of course, here. And you can also find me on uh, really Spotify. Um, It's all Hope Follows. It makes it super easy. It's either Julie Kemsler on Instagram and Facebook or Hope Follows. And Google it. You'll find me. And I would love to stay in touch with you. If you want to email me, juliekemsler at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Perfect. That sounds lovely. And if you guys want more strategies on how to grow your business in the Lord's way, as opposed to the world's way, come join our free Facebook group. It's called Faithful Ladypreneurs. We have about 1900 Christian women entrepreneurs who are excited to get to know you more. Uh, We are doing networking events as well as just being able to connect with other ladies. And you can even advertise your business on Saturday's comment thread. So check out Faithful Ladypreneurs Facebook group. Thanks so much for being here, Julie. Thank you for having me. I love what you do, Elise. Keep going strong. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we will see you next time on Divinely Driven Results.